On the breakfast today, we take a look at the leadership tussle in the All Progressives Congress between Governor May Malabuni and his Niger state counterpart Abubakar Sani Bello and its implications for the party's national convention slated for the 26th of March 2022. Also on the breakfast, Nigeria's inflation rate hits three-month high at 15.70% amid high can fuel prices. Don't forget, we also will be looking through the day's newspapers, analyzing the biggest stories of the day. Good morning and welcome to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. I'm Kofi Bartels. And I am Messi Bokor. It's a very beautiful uh, Wednesday morning and it's really great to be back on your screen. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. A lot to talk about today. Um, what's happening with the All Progressives Congress. A very interesting uh, um, occurrence at the party's national sector. Uh, we'll be having a guest to give us some crack analysis of that. Of course, Opura Boy in Kutaria makes his triumphant return um, on of the press this morning. We're looking forward to that. It's a bubble package. I encourage you to stick around with us on Plus TV Africa. Uh, Mercy, quite a interesting, you know, stories and uh, events that we're monitoring on our trending segment this morning. Um, let's start off with uh, the situation in Nigeria's aviation sector. Um, of course, if we really remember, we've been talking about this on the breakfast and monitoring the developments on Plus TV Africa across our programs, including the news. Um, the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited, NNPC, had to go or be called to the House of Representatives to sit down with airline operators and indeed um, oil marketers to iron out a deal. And uh, of course, this came amid a complaint, an SOS from the airline operators. Um, in particular, the chairman of Air Peace, which seems to be, um, in quote, or unquote, the flagship carrier, the leading airline in Nigeria, speaking on behalf of the rest, that in three days, uh, if carrier is not taken in three days, the airlines will shut down operation. Um, and this this said a lot of people, you know, racing and there was fear and there was panic and the House of Representatives called the NNPC, which is the sole importer of uh, fuel into the country, like they say. And if we remember, uh, Alain Oyema, who is the chairman of Air Peace, had said that um, the, the local airlines will, will be better off being given licenses by the federal government to import fuel into the country so they don't have to grapple with a high cost, extra cost, and also scarcity was an issue as well. And you could see the picture that pictures that were rolled, you know, and it was shared by NNPC of uh, Malam Abba Kari, uh, Melakari, sorry, um, signing a document after that, you know, uh, that meeting between the parties at the House of Representatives, and everybody standing over him. It looked like, you know, one of those um, pictures from the United States of America, you know, or the um, the G12, where you know you find the entire, you know, president standing over maybe two presidents who are having issues. Maybe you look at uh, Putin and you look at uh, Trump or something, and they say, okay, you must sign an argument for peace today. And so we're standing over him, and he signed. Um, but Alan Yoma Oyama had said at that time that even if they're able to get the Jet A1 from the NMPC or whoever at 500 naira, you know, per liter, that they will still have to be selling the tickets to Nigerians at 85,000 naira, you know. No, so I, I, but, I think but that... The, the latest is that... Um, you know, that, that, that's 85,000 naira has actually gone up to, what, 120,000 naira as a warning from Alan Uyema. He's saying if urgent action are taken to reduce the price of petrol or, or aviation fuel, rather, it'll have to go for 120,000 naira. Um, well, it, it's, it's unfortunate, and uh, I think that, uh, that my, as much as we want to begin to look at the intrigues and, you know, the reason, the rationale behind all of this, uh, it's it's quite valid. If you look at it mostly, uh, you would understand that it can be very challenging. Like we said, running business, mm -hmm. being a, you know an entrepreneur in Nigeria, yes. is really not a joke. One would think that at this point in time, there should be weavers. Government should be, um, you know, very considerate. Government should be paying attention to ensuring that the atmosphere, the environment, is very friendly. 
and this would actually imply with policies as well because these things don't happen you know outside of the box or don't happen mm -hmm. by themselves and so one would expect that uh, at a time but i just think that we're not being very honest you know with the economy so for whatever reason it is we constantly do not want to tell ourselves you know the truth and that really really hurts because if we tell ourselves the truth then god may would understand the need for us to you know address um you know some of this consent that these um airline operators or owners have actually raised the issue of having the license which i think might not be something that will happen in the nearest future but you know, making these products because you want to ask yourself, what was the essence? Uh, I mean, how we, how did we get to the point of having this product being very scarce? I mean, scarcity of the product. Like you would all want to agree with me, um, nothing is really, really scarce. Everything is in abundance. It's just uh, man-made scarcity is man-made. But like I mentioned, it's high time that government begin to look inwards. If you have. Um, you know, foreign investors leaving the environment because it's not very friendly. Why don't you make the environment at least a little friendly for, uh, you know, those business owners here through your policies? So I think it's time that the Minister of Petroleum Resources, you know, pay attention, you know, to this sector. Like yesterday, we had a guest saying that um, this fuel scarcity in the aviation sector, you find out that the Jet A1 is also being used. Um, so it's something that you have Nigerians also grappling with. And uh, that, 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 that's also, you know, on the high. Now, uh, we also know that the, the outcome of this, if we're looking at, you know, FF 120,000, that's a lot. Um, we're talking about inflation here. Uh, you're asking yourself how much money is coming to the hands of the people. It forces the people to now use the road, which is not safe. And, you know, it's also time consuming. So I think it's such a difficult, a very difficult time to be, uh, a Nigerian and you know to be in this space but I, I know that government can there's something that government can do yeah but, but, but the government is actually saying I mean of course if you look at the national Nigerian National Petroleum Company Company Limited um, uh, whilst um, um, Alan Yama is saying that it, the tickets are going for as high as 120,000 naira and they could send the cheapest ticket could be 70,000 naira um, <clears throat> um, he, he also um, I mean the 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 uh, airline operators were given some some sort of hope by the the GMD of the uh, NNPC uh, and the president of Bella Carey, who disclosed that the plans are underway to issue airlines licenses to port aviation fuel. Well, let's you see know, how so, that pans out. So that, that is um that is that is that is some hope. Of course, um the um the meetings that or the hearing that was attended by the major market association of Nigeria, the depot products. And petroleum Products Market Association as well, um, you know, they had to, you know, agree that the price of this Jet A1 um, be set at 500 naira per litre, down from 670 naira per litre. So hopefully what the NNPC GMD has said will come to pass. So, we'll so but, but we can constantly discussion. depend on hope. As much as that sounds very brilliant, it sounds like, you know, government is doing something. But usually, you find out that these are just policy statements. It doesn't come. There's no plan. I mean, I'm not saying that it's not, you know, but this is Nigeria. And we, you would look at antecedent. And if you look at antecedent, then it's very questionable. It might just be, oh, this is just a way to just quell all of it, and that's the end. Is there a plan? What have they done? Have they put out, you know, you, we need to see the action plan. We need to see that they're very deliberate. It's not just one of those policy statements, because policy statement is not action. It doesn't show any plan. And even if you even have a plan, you ask yourself, what's the implementation? So, but we're asking, I'm hoping that government will understand that at the end of the day, Nigerians will be bearing the, uh, bearing the brunt, and it's important that we pay attention to the business environment let's make it as much you know less um, stressful for those because uh, as much as you would say it's a better option the last as of last week we were talking about the fact that airlines were saying they were going to shut off I mean they were just going to shut down operations and we know what that would mean even though they would be losing but you know um, so your one would say it's a better option rather than just going entirely away. But uh, like I, I mentioned earlier on, government needs to pay attention to the, you know, the environment uh, where people exist and also ensure that it's easier for people. At this point in time, let, let's begin to look at um, you know, waiving taxes and ensuring that uh, we encourage all of these business owners. It, it's, it's, it's really, you know. Yes, so we have more trending stories. 
Of course, we do have more trending story uh, or stories. Uh, we look at this particular one, very interesting. It's got a lot of Nigerians talking, and it's really, really sad. So it, it talks about the, uh, there's been a reaction. First of all, um, you have this analysis, a London-based global citizenship and residence advisory firm published a quarterly exclusive data from international air transport. I mean, talking about passport ranking. And so the Nigerian Immigration Services or Service on Tuesday uh, reacted to the global ranking that placed the Nigerian passport 98th uh, out of 199 countries that we have. And we're below some African states such as Malawi, Niger, <laughs> Chad, uh, Zimbabwe, Uganda, and Gambia. And uh, we're the giants of Africa. So we're below. So I saw a lot of reactions. Some people were very comical about it. Others, I'm sure that it's just a way not to, you know, take it to heart. But it's really, really, um, you know, heartbreaking if you ask me. And it's, it's serious. Now, so according to the data, details obtained from, uh, you know, this London-based global citizenship and uh, residency advisory firm, the Passport Index published quarterly is based on an exclusive data from International Air Transport Association, which maintains the world's largest database of travel information. Now, uh, the recently published first quarter 2020 index cross-examined passports of 199 countries with 227 travel destination and ranked this passport based on global access and mobility. Now, each, uh, each passport is called based on the number of destination that the holder can access uh, via free, uh, I'm to, um, we're talking about visa free now. Uh, it also applies if the passport holder can obtain a visa on arrival, visitors permit, or an electronic travel authority upon entry. So you have countries like Japan, Singapore, topping the ranks with passports, gaining access to 192 countries, and United States and the United Kingdom ranks seventh, while Yemen, Pakistan, uh, Syria, Iraq, Afghanistan settled, uh, you know, at the bottom five. And so despite, uh, uh, you know, the statistics still continue, but mostly for us is the fact that you have Nigeria just below some African countries. And out of 199 countries, uh, we're ranked 998 uh, in that ranking. And some people have reacted saying that uh, this ranking, if you want to look at it, so the issue of bilateral relations is also a major concern right here. And some other persons have said, hey, uh, bilateral relations, countries will get into this uh, bilateral agreement or relationship or relations with you if they understand the economy. And so it's just a reflection of, uh, you know, the passport is just a reflection of the Nigerian economy. And some people are really arguing that for sure. So if you look at the economy, you look at, uh, we talk about uh, the business environment, you talk about how friendly the economy is to do business. A lot of foreign investors have pulled out whether or not we want to agree, including, you know, those who are local um, investors, I mean, right here. So all of these issues, you talk about the behavior of Nigerians outside of Nigeria. Nigeria, some of these, uh, you know, cases of fraud and what have you. This has also contributed, whether or not we like it, uh, uh, to, uh, you know, just uh, like an obstruction and has made us rank uh, that number. I mean, looking at the statistics now, 98 out of 199. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, I, th I think, you know, Nigeria should, should take a chill pill. You know. And not everything about the country is bad. Okay, mm. not everything about. In fact, you'd leave this country, go to other African countries, you'd appreciate some aspects, not all. You'd appreciate the bad roads of the black to power supply, but you appreciate some aspects of the country, Nigeria. Not everything about Nigeria that comes out should be talked about, should be lamented, we should lament, we should. What are people lamenting about this? All right, this is this, 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 uh, Henry Passport Index for um, uh, the first quarter of 2022. What is it based on? It's based on, uh, on they, they score countries based on how many countries um, you can either visit visa free or visit with visa on, our, on arrival at the airport, you know. And then also, of course, if you're given um, a, a, a permit to be in that country at the airport, you know, then you do add all those things to your score to now 
rank you. And some, some things are, are within the control of countries affected. Some things are without the control of countries affected. Um, Nigeria may not have as many countries like Singapore and Japan, which they can visit visa-free. Um, that's it, you know, it's up to those countries. It's their foreign policy, you understand, or their immigration policy. And, and I mean, you look at some, some aspects of it. I think, you know, the population of the country also may count. Because you look at the fact that Nigeria is the most populous black nation on earth, um, you want to ask me how many countries you want to give visa free because of the number of people coming from the country, you know. So, so it's not always negative, you know. There's nothing here, really. Oh, we're below, we're below um, uh, Niger. Oh, we're below Ghana. We're below Chad. Chad, oh, see Chad, we're below. It is, in some of these countries are Francophone countries, most of them, um, you know, the likes of Chad, Niger Republic and Co., who may have it easier to go to other Francophone countries. Now, I would like us to even go and look at the, the countries that the Chadian, Ghanaian, uh, Gabonese, and Niger, Iran passport can, can get you into visa free. It's so, I mean, People are, are, no, are lamenting, no, no. oh, countries, but no, but, they're calling but, the president But, but, if, you look, but, if, but if you look at it, it is, uh, but, if, but if you it's look at it, no, no one is actually saying, like I always say that, no, uh, uh, that you know, it's a collective things. effort, it's however you want to look at it, whatever it is. It's the fact that at the end of the day, this it would be some bilateral agreement. And if you enter into, you know, some sort of, some kind of agreement with a country, you can't force a country you know, to enter into an agreement with you, what sort of agreement that they do get to at the end of the day. So for whatever reason, if they say, okay, this is not what we want, it's not what they want. So at the end of the day, it might not necessarily be the fault of the government, but you can also take out the fact that, you know, there's a lot on our plate. And, uh, you know... Um, it's, 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 there are countries you can visit visa-free or visa on arrival with a Nigerian passport, you know? You know, so, so the thing is, it's not a problem. You want to have a visa, apply for a visa. No, you know, no, no. Even no, if you, you have, even if you have an American see, passport, you can't visit Nigeria visa-free. You have so, a UK so, passport. So, 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 but you this can't is visit also. But, but you can also take. You have a Japanese fact, passport. You have to apply for a visa. Does it mean these countries are bad? No, no. So, so the point here is whether or not no, no one will come and say Mr. Nigeria uh, because they are no absolute. They are just relative, and that's the truth. So nothing is bad to his end. No one has said that you have perfect countries. They are not perfect countries, including the world's best democracy, including the best government that you anticipate. It's just like nobody has a perfect life. They're not pe you know, there's no perfection. Mm -hmm. The thought of perfection is an illusion. You don't have a perfect government. There's no perfect family. But we're saying that there are just some basic things that should be there. And I think it's okay if Nigerians actually share the sentiment of saying, oh, uh, we are the giant of Africa. We're below this. We're below some countries. By the fact that we are seen as the big brother of this continent, you know, it, it should be some bragging right to be at the top there. Whether or not it means anything or not, it's just, you know, the fact that, hey, you are a senior brother or you're a big brother and you should be taking, you know, taking so the lead. That's what it is. But does not, does not take out the fact that, you know, you don't have pluses. Should you know, I tell you the leading us? reason why, why the countries, countries do not want to give Nigerians passports like they do other Nationals. And we have mentioned some of these issues. The number one reason has nothing to do with government. It has everything to do with the attitude of some Nigerians, not all. But, but we have mentioned that. Yes, I, yes. I have oh, talked oh, about uh -huh, that. Uh -huh. That, you know, so, the, so the, people the, should not the, you know, the attitude. giant of Africa. Someone told me yesterday, are we truly the giant of Africa? I said, this has nothing to do with the country. Some of the citizens themselves uh, have engaged, not all, some. I know a few, a few bad eggs will give the whole a bad name. So, 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 so that, that's it, you know. If someone gets into maybe a scam, for instance, in a country, I mean, because even the Ghanaians are suffering as well. You know, Ghanaians are getting to scam in another country. And then they now said, okay, you know what, we have to pull down and reduce the number of people we scan into a country. When Nigeria does something, it gets blown out. And then they begin to allow it to affect their immigration policy. You know, we're talking about the UK, which we'll get to in a, in a, in a moment. But some comments online, um, it, it now became sort of a a back and not a back and forth, but uh, someone said, you know, Nigerian passport now ranks below Niger, Chad, Zimbabwe, Uganda, and others. I think it's a call um, to, first of all, not panic, but secondly, I know that it's a collective responsibility. That's all I'm saying. That's so there's a comment here, um, uh, you know, a Ghanaian saying that even their passport is not ranking too well, and she's also claiming that. Um, um, well, let me not go into this. This is controversial. No, but, but mm -hmm. Kofi, in the course of this conversation, I had mentioned that, yes, we know that 
Uh, at the end of the day, if you look at all of this visa-free, whatever you talk about, some of those criteria they have mentioned, it has to do with some bilateral relations. But on the other hand, I also mentioned that the reputation yeah. of Nigerians, the behavior of Nigerians outside of Nigeria some. has also contributed, mm -hmm. some Nigerians. I also think that Nigerians outside of Nigeria are more law-abiding than where they are here because they have a system Absolutely. that is very functional. Absolutely. I remember the time where the late Dora Kunyili may have so continued to rest in peace. She was about uh, you know, the issue of rebranding Nigeria. And she made a statement. She, she narrated her experience in one of these uh, countries, France. And she said her bag was actually snatched at the airport. And you know what she was talking about? The fact that... The bag was snatched oh, at the Yes, airport. it was snatched at the airport. She wanted to raise an alarm. So some people came, security uh, personnel came and told her, you know, not to scream. That if she screamed, that people were going to run. She should stay put. They were going to be on top of the issue. Okay. And she said that up until that moment, no, nobody heard it. Nothing has been done. So it's not that crimes don't happen in this country. It's not like you don't have all of these mishaps. It's not like in these countries you don't have the suburbs, you don't have the bad roads. But I'm just saying that the basic things, if you ask, you, if you, ask you know, a common Nigerian now, you know, if you ask an average Nigerian, that would be the word um, why they want to leave this country. I thought, you know, because of power supply. You know, they're just basic things. I don't think Nigerians are asking for too much. Just provide the basic. Let's have, you know, a, a proper road infrastructure, road network. Let's have power supply. People will pay. Do you know that Nigerians will pay, including the fact that even if tomorrow you say the FA is 120,000 ticket, people are there that will buy. They will pay for it. We're just saying make these things, the basic things of life just available and that's it. All but right. I think we need to we, move we, on. We now. have to move on. A, a interesting one there. Well, um, of course um, UK suspending priority visa application in Nigeria is another one that got tongues wagging. <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's a temporary measure. Um, this is a suspension of priority services for applica applications for work, you have applications for study, and applications for family visas in Nigeria. Um, so for now, you have to stay at home. Don't uh, go apply to travel to London, you know, because it's, um, it's been suspended. A statement was put out on Tuesday. Uh, the UK government saying that it was prioritizing applications made under the Ukraine family scheme. Uh, and in response to a humanitarian crisis arising from the invasion in Ukraine. Of course, um, what we should also put uh, uh, up that it was really trending about um, uh, not less than 40, more than 40,000 uh, UK families signing up to receive a Ukrainian, you know. And um, some persons were crying, oh, racism, racism. No. Why would they be signing up to receive Ukrainians? But um, the UK... Uh, when, when did they sign up to receive Africans into their homes? You know, you know, every small thing, a black man will shout racism. But let's leave that for another day. So no, the UK government is saying that this, uh, this new policy is because they want to prioritize uh, applications made under the Ukraine family uh, scheme and in response to the humanitarian crisis in Ukraine. So this Ukraine family scheme is uh, one that allows applicants to join family members or extended, uh, uh, extend their stay rather in the UK. Um, and I don't know whether this is a, 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 an excuse to just put a, a, on ice the applications in Nigeria. No, but I, I think that uh, uh, sometimes we also need to understand what it is. It's commendable of the United Kingdom to do what they have done. Uh, if you are, you, if you were talking about the world being a global village and anything that happens affects us. But uh, foreign policy, they have a right. Uh, they, they're a sovereign nation. And so whatever decision that a, a country, if Nigeria decides, you know, to come, or come up with, you know, uh, a, a policy now, you want to talk about a policy, which would now be seen, uh, will be referred as a policy that would affect others. I mean, they are within their space, they are within their space to act in that capacity. In this case, is a humanitarian concern. And if you understand what's happening between Russia and Ukraine, uh, the humanitarian corridor has been open. Uh, it's just, you know, human. Uh, when we talk about the fact that uh, the world has lost its humanity, I mean, we're no longer uh, acting as humans. We don't have conscience. It's just the fact that people are going through a lot at this point. It's a war zone. It's important that uh, you have countries. Um, one, one would also think that apart from the United Kingdom, that you have other countries also acting in this direction, having policies that would uh, ensure that uh, 
uh, people or persons in in this war zone are protected so mm. it's it's actually in course first of all if they decide like i'd say it's a country it's a sovereign nation that would take policies that would uh, always represent their interest and for whatever they decide to do it's not your business it's their country if yours is not okay fix yours and stay at home so but i don't see that i don't see that as racism i don't see that as a problem i just see that as a, a humanitarian effort you know to protect and ensure that uh, there's soccer there's refuge for those who are in this war-torn zone all right, so, so, so um, uh, this is a temporary measure by the UK government just so they can focus on the Ukraine um, crisis and taking in those uh, families that need to be taken in. Um, so far, the latest, because I've had to do a check, it's up from more than 40,000 or 44,000 to 100,000 families uh, in the UK signing up to receive uh, Ukrainians. And they'll be paid $456 each. Uh, some people have asked, though, um, are these UK citizens doing this because of the money? And then someone had to, and I was monitoring some comments, had to say, you know what, that $456 doesn't really mean much to the average UK family. They're doing this because they want to do it. You understand? But we have to move on. And that's uh, the much you can take on our trending segment right here on The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Well, that's it. When we return with time for us to look at the front pages of our national dailies, please stay with us.